Okay. So where did you? What were you doing during the, the apartheid? What was I do, doing? Well, I was growing up during the apartheid years. Yeah. Uh, I was at school studying. What university? What school? I I was at Durban High School. Excellent. I then studied at uh, Dorkies. Dorkies. Yeah, Dorkies. Unisa. Unisa. U M R S A. Yeah. And uh, University KZN. B A degree and a B A. B A. B A. It's okay. That's one degree. Now guys might be a bit confused because now and a B A. B A. B A. B A. And N T S D. But today guys just get a B A. B A. is a postgraduate degree. You've got to have one degree to get that next degree. And then N T. Uh, what else? Natal N T S D. T-S-D. Yeah. Okay, first question. <clears throat> what was it like not having people of colour at your university when the Bantu, when the Bantu Edu Education Act was implicated? Well, it means we didn't, we didn't have people of colour at any of the institutions I studied at and learned at. People of colour. There, 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 there were no non-white boys at DHS and there were no non-white students at DHS and there were no non-white students at the universities and training colleges where I studied okay. Be because because of the apartheid se segregation laws so like and then um, did you have any good friends that you had to leave that had to leave because of the Bantu Education Act? No, because I grew up in a white area. No, no. I grew up in a white area in Durban. White area. Yes, because of what was called the Group Areas Act. The Group Areas Act meant that you white people lived in. White suburbs with white schools, schools for white pupils. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, we lived in the Berea. There were all white people around us. The schools were all for, for white pupils. Yeah. Okay, and what was the nearest um, black school like? What, what, was it treated quite poorly? I, I would think the nearest schools that weren't for white were perhaps the Indian schools in Durban. Schools, yeah. Because if you want to make a point there, um, apartheid didn't just separate black and white people. It separated white, Indian, yeah. colored, Indian color. and black. So they were actually, according to the apartheid laws, there, there, there were four separate race groups. So the, 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 the nearest schools where there were non-whites were perhaps uh, Sastry College, which was down in Mayville. Um, I think that, that perhaps was the closest, or maybe some coloured schools in Sydney. Um, so what do you think it was like to be a person of colour while this law was added? What, were you, what do you think if you were a colored person? Well, it's very hard to answer because we, we obviously had very good schools. White, the white community had good schools. Uh, and I know blacks, and I'm talking about black Africans, by the Bantu Education Act, um, definitely got an inferior education. So it's like a terrible education. They yeah, I taught the basics. Okay, well... Um, have you got a question on the Bond to Education Act? Uh, I do. Okay. 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 Uh, were there any riots when this law was implicated? So were there any marches going around when this happened? Well, there, 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 was, look, there, was, there was ongoing protest to apartheid, but I don't remember any particular protest against the Bond to Education Act. 
particular. Okay. Uh, were you against the bunch of education law? Actually, at the time, at the time we knew we knew very little about it because, of course, we lived in white areas, white yeah, standards. Very little. We, we, we knew little about it because because the apartheid laws kept the, kept the races apart. Um, and so we didn't really have a chance to, to to interact. We didn't have a chance to interact with, with, with students or pupils from other from other race groups. Yeah. Um, did it affect your studying at all? If it did, how? Well, I think it was to the advantage of my. Now, in, in retrospect, eh? uh, in retrospect, it obviously was to the advantage of, of my study. Uh, but we didn't really get involved in politics. Um, because, you know, politics in those days was white politics. And the parliament consisted of white people white politicians, white political organizations. Political. Okay, okay number seven. Uh, what do you think this country would be like with, uh, if this law hadn't been implicated? Right, I think we would have, a, we would have had a more united, uh, a better qualified a better qualified population across all the race groups. Cross. Right, because uh, you know, black, black, black pupils and black students would have had opportunities, which they're starting to get today. They would have had those opportunities fifty years ago. So, t t t today we would be. Better, better qualified. The whole nation, I believe, would be better qualified. So you think we wouldn't be in this crisis that we're in right now? I don't think we would be in this junk status. Yeah, because where we we've got to introduce laws to give black people more opportunities. I think that would have all been solved. That would have all been dealt with years ago. Okay. Uh, let me just. Start. Okay. Um. How did this law make you feel? <laughs> Well, it's the same sort of question we got earlier there. Um, at, at the time, you know, at the time in, in, the, in the 1950s and the 1960s, we, because of segregation, yeah. we were out in a loop. You know, we were kept to our own community, our own schools. Um, what, what, what would happen if you disobeyed that law? Well, you must understand what the law was. Do you, do you want to do you want to reverse the orders of your question? Um, can you can you can you carry on? Okay, because uh, you need to understand what the law was about. Uh, it was against the law for a, a black student to attend a white school. It was breaking the law. It would also be against the law for a white student, a white pupil, to attend a black school or an Indian, a school for Indian or a school for colored. Did you know any people who did? No, no, because you could be... <laughs> and there were complaints. There were complaints that in some areas there were, there were children who didn't look white they looked more like colored or African students and they were at a white school. So the, there were parents, particularly Afrikaner parents, who complained about these non-white pupils. Okay, um, uh, what were your parents' overview on this law? All right, Mark. My, my parents were very anti the National Party who introduced the apartheid. Party. 
my parents that voted for the United Party and then later the Progressive Party, which became the DA. Party and then the what other? other was that, likewise, yeah. Because what was the, the other? Uh, okay, the United Party, yeah. that's for in the 1950s and 60s. And then it was called the Progressive Party. Progressive Party. Then, then it became DA. It became, it became, those guys became the DA. Okay. And uh, do you want to well, um, well, no, keep going on about it? Uh, yeah, so, so, so my, I know my parents always voted against the National Party. Okay. And uh, I myself always voted against the National Party so when I was old enough. So you formed like a, a, bit, a bit of you formed a bit of resistance. No, right? but in English, um, in Natal, in Natal were not strong supporters. Okay, in Natal they were not strong supporters of the National Party, which was seen as a party for Afrikaners and their beliefs. That were your granny Patsy was part of Black Sash. Yeah, and she would have protested. She did. Mm. She even she even harbored um, she harbored some Zimbabweans, some resistance. Back. And that you could get. Uh, you, into big trouble, man. You, you you couldn't have uh, illegal protests or demonstrations or gatherings or, or gatherings, and they would be accosted by security police, and they would have their banners taken away and their names taken down. Oh, and they got yeah. detained. Okay. Yeah. Um. Final Isn't question. The last outpost, oh? Huh? We, we were called the last outpost of the English, uh, the British Empire because Natal was mainly English speaking, therefore our politics were mainly against the, the Afrikaner nationalists. Uh, That's why we were so ugly about the people from Benalanda, the Valleys. Because they were Afrikaans. Well, they were Afrikaans. So we weren't actually racist, we were racist to our own colour, we were just more racist to people who were Afrikaans. Okay. Okay, final question. Um, uh, what did you do to respond to this law? Do you know any well, people who are like, common people? Or? No, but there was a guy at DHS. Uh, there, there, there were a number of boys at DHS who, when they left school and they went to university, they um, they opposed the government. Uh, they openly opposed the government. Opposed. And